there in Ayah 58 in Surah Yasin, which is Surah number 36. If you're following this translation, it's page 744. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سلام قولا من رب الرحيم الله سبحانه وتعالى will announce to the people of Jannah that there is now eternal peace that uh, there is no room for any kind of imbalance, no room for any argument, any bickering, any ill feelings. There's no room for harm. And there's nothing in this kingdom of Jannah except a state of eternal peace and bliss and blessings. So this will be a statement a word, a code from the Lord who is all about Rahmah and about His mercy. You know. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will announce and this announcement will remain with the people of Jannah forever. It is the switch <coughs> with which Jannah runs this statement of Allah. Salamun qawlam. The Rabbi Rahim, the name Ar Rahim, is in, uh, significant in the sense that the manifestation of this name is uh, selective. That it, the name selects the special type of Rahma, and that is how we see this name of Allah being used for Allah in Jannah. وَمْتَازُ الْيَوْمَ أَيُّهَا الْمُجْرِمُونَ Now we go back to the Day of Judgment. This, these statements that have occurred about the people of Jannah, that's in Jannah. So there is no chronology here. Since the Day of Judgment is one long day, the last day, and then Jannah is now in eternity. The author the revealer of the book, the Qur'an, uh, will always choose to move from one scene to another, frontwards and backwards in time. Um, so you have to be kind of very diligent as to understand that chronology for Allah is not necessary. So he discusses the way he discusses. So, Salamu Qawlam bi Rabbi Rahim chronologically is after this ayah from Tazul Yawm Yawm Ayyuh al-Mujrimun but in the context of Wahi we usually go from one realm to another one scene to another instantaneously to show that this is Allah who is speaking and since there is no time there for Allah everything is the same mm. everything happens all at the same time, all at once. <laughs> so this وَمْتَازُ الْيَوْمَ أَيُّهَا mujrimun is a statement that will be made prior to those who go into Jannah. So now effectively for us, we are going backwards. Mm. Uh, so today, اليوم, the word اليوم is today, this day, the day of judgment, when the proceedings for the trials and the auditing and the measuring and weighing of the scales of deeds and also the uh, the book of deeds being given a right hand, left hand and the social justice court and all of that. That is that day, this day. So today, today all of you uh, who are now criminals should stand apart. Al-Mujrimun. The Quran 
uses the word mujrim to refer to those who commit shirk and those who are guilty of injustice because in Allah's eyes they are criminals you know? so this is where the word mujrim is used they are criminal because of their offense against God and they are criminal because they are, have offenses against humanity both yeah. <coughs> so one is a, a, a crime against the divine and the other is a crime against humanity both are called mujrim in the terms of the Quran yeah. so on this day the day of judgment when judgment is passed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will separate those who are criminal from those who are not criminal yeah. so Initially, everybody will not know who they are, what they are. <coughs> and people all will all be one. And then later on, as the proceedings now proceed, you will see that people will be separated. First, according to their Iman and Kufr. Um, and that there will be a huge, significant group of believers, and there will be the rest who are non-believers. They will be separated. So that separation will occur first. فَمِنْكُمْ مُؤْمِنْ وَمِنْكُمْ kafir. So that is the first separation. Then the second separation will be the various degrees of kufr and the various degrees of good people amongst those who believe. So they will then be ranked according to their good deeds and so on, the believers. And then these people who are non-believers, they will be separated according to their evil and so on. This seems to be a another type of separation. One does become distinct. Imtiyaz means that you become distinct even from within the group of criminals you are going to be you know, even more distinct. So there will be unfortunately levels and grades of kufr and shirk and dhulm and injustice and so on. Yeah, so this statement will be made to show those who are non-criminals will be blessed and honored over those who are criminals. Okay, so then those who are guilty of uh, crimes, they will look up to these people who will be blessed and saved and who will be honored and dignified and they will be on couches and they will be on members, as also mentioned. Okay, and they will be in high balconies and places. They will be looking up towards these people from a very low plane. And that is how the separation will become another means of punishment for these people. So if you can imagine, uh, that is a very, very clear and bright day and everyone separated according to their faith and lack of faith and then according to their actions and deeds then you will see these ranks and files and platoons of p columns of people and everybody will recognize who these people are so the day of judgment is a day of recognition you recognize everybody according to who they are and then what they are and so on so then so the the uh, announcement will be to all people, in front of all people, the announcement will be Ayyuhal Mujrimoon. O you who are criminals and guilty of injustices and kufr and shirk, we want you to be separated over there so everybody can look at you. Yeah, so that's a spectacle in and of itself. So that's how Rafi Allah saved us from being from that group. Yeah. And the reason why these people will be there in a very different and distinct group is the following ayah. The following ayah is the reason why ayah number 59 will happen. Uh, so what happens on earth and what happens here is a reason for what happens there. That's what it's called Yawm al -jaza, the day of compensation where what you did there uh, it will translate to what happens here, in that sense. Yeah. 
الم اعهد اليكم يا بني ادم الا تعبدوا الشيطان انه لكم عدو مبين وان اعبدوني هذا صراط مستقيم did i not make a covenant with you o children of adam that you should not worship the devil for indeed for you he is an open enemy meaning allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given everybody a mind and a brain and intellect and everybody knows who the devil is and they know that the devil exists within themselves and they know that there are people who worship the devil and they know that people who do the work of the devil whether they subscribe to that as a religion or they subscribe to that as a lifestyle it doesn't matter following the devil may be uh, conscious or may be subconscious and sometimes even unconscious yeah so the devil is there to make sure that you uh, do not do anything to please allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so you have this force in the universe the force in our world which is now going to move you away from the equilibrium of islam and uh, the good deeds and move you towards the injustices and the crimes that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of in ayyuhal mujrimun you are criminal because you follow the devil the devil is the great criminal or the greatest criminal and you follow his lead and you follow his methodology you follow his approach you follow his lifestyle yeah allah ta'abud shaitan that you should not worship the devil the word the word worship here is uh, used in a very broad sense not in the sense that there's the devil in front and people bow down and they worship <coughs> even though there is a significant group of people in the world who do do devil worship and you might be amazed and shocked as to what types of people are into uh, the satanic rituals uh, you'd be shocked uh, who these people are but anyway you just take a look at barnes and noble bookstore and you look at the occult section and see the occult section is a huge section in the whole bookstore um people buy these books and they write these books and they read these books and they practice these books and so on so you must not assume that this doesn't happen it happens much more than you think yeah the, the devil has a significant power over people over artists over entertainers over pop artists over uh, movie uh over the movie industry and all that's all from the devil and some of those people actually worship the devil they are actually actual devil worshipers yeah. in the strict sense of the word and then they promote their ideals yeah, into uh, the human mainstream and that's how you get people to worship the devil yeah. so devil basically is a symbol of non existence the devil is a symbol of evil the devil is a symbol of anarchy the devil is a symbol of being in total sense and state of imbalance and so on so the these symbolic ideals of the devil are very very prevalent in the world and people when they subscribe to these ideals they are worshiping the devil so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said here in the quran and again on the day of judgment he will say that i i took a covenant from you that you won't worship the devil o children of adam you know children of adam meaning that uh, the devil uh, was honored in front uh, the devil was not honored because of adam and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rejected the devil because of adam so the devil's now uh, only purpose is to mislead the children of adam because adam was the reason for his expulsion so it's for him it's for him it's revenge you know you know the devil comes in many shapes forms uh, through many means and um, you know there's just so much to the occult uh, that we 
an attribute, but uh, the, he does um, exist and he does exert his power and influence over so many, so many billions of people. Well, that's the devil. Yeah, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes this expose of the devil that we told you you shouldn't worship the devil. Why? Because he's an open enemy. He's a clear enemy. He's not even hiding. He, he will insinuate and he will mislead. But he will never say he's your friend. He's always said that he's your enemy. Um, so he's not someone who's saying he's deceiving you and saying in this way that I'm your friend and uh, you know you can follow me. And no, he's openly declared in uh, there in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has openly declared that he is your enemy so there's no reason for you to follow your enemy. Mm. And then we also took a covenant from you that you should worship me meaning follow the rules of guidance as they are revealed from me through the prophets alayhi wasalam and then through the prophets sallallahu alayhi wasallam through the Quran and through the Sunnah that you should now worship Allah by observing those rules and regulations so that you can defeat the enemy who is the devil. So this shows that life is a struggle and life is a battle. It doesn't show that life is easy. So now Muslims, if they assume that we have an easy life, then they have something wrong with them. You know, they're not right up here. It's not easy to be a Muslim because that's part of the battle. Right? Uh, I mean, I'm not saying that you should work, uh, you should, w you should uh, wait for any calamity, God forbid. I'm saying that we shouldn't take it that easy and say, oh, it's okay, uh, we can get through life. No, it's not that okay. You will struggle um, at some point in your life with issues and ideals and ideas and relationships and everything else, decisions, and then you have the will of Allah, <coughs> and then you have the will of people, and then you have the will of the government, and you have the will of uh, your boss at work, or your family members, your siblings, or your parents, or uh, your spouses. You have to deal with all that. That's real life. And it's not a Mickey Mouse uh, idea of life. Everything is now very, very nice and straightforward. It's not. The devil will complicate life for you. That's his job, to make sure you suffer, right? yeah, to make sure you, you are confused, yeah? to make sure that you get a sense of depression now and then, to make sure that you're not always happy, to make sure that you are, uh, what do you call it, disappointed, make sure that you fight, fight with each other, fight with your parents, fight with your siblings and spouses, fight with everybody in the world. That's his job. His job is to make life extremely difficult for you. If, he, if you succumb, then he will succeed. But if you resist and you follow Allah and you obey Allah and you worship Allah, then he will not. But it's a daily struggle. That's why you do salat five times a day. Yeah, five times a day, a devil will come and say, no, don't do this, do this. So it's, a, it's a daily struggle. It's constant struggle. So we have to be alert that this open enemy is not going to sleep. The devil never sleeps. You know that, right? The devil and his hordes, uh, his armies, they don't sleep. It's not, it's not insomnia. They just don't sleep, period. They're active, they're always active, they're always alive, and they're always doing things. And they're always creating issues and problems in your mind. Some of it is psychological, some of it is pseudo-psychological, some of it is real, some of it is not real, and all of that. But never mind. The, the, the point is that, هَذَا صِرَاطٌ مستقيم, This is the straight path, the path of worshipping Allah, always. And that's why we have worship in our vocab and we have ibadah in our daily lives at least five times a day to make sure that the devil <coughs> does not infiltrate 
in these times, in the morning or before the morning, <coughs> before the sun rises, and in midday when the sun is there, going through the horns of the devil, and at the Maghrib time when the sun sets through the horns of the devil. Okay? So these are times when the Prophet ﷺ said that the sun goes through the horns of the devil. So around these times we have salat, we have prayer around these times to make sure that we don't go that way and we become, uh, we take a time out from all of that and go into the mode of ibadah and worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is the right path. And in that sense of ibadah we go back to Allah and we, uh, you know, recharge our spiritual battery and we come out from salat saying that we have to be careful the devil doesn't get the advantage and take advantage of us and doesn't get the better of us and we maintain our straight path. But it's a daily struggle. That's how it is, life. For that daily struggle, inshallah, if you are successful, then you'll have eternal peace. Assalamun qawlam min rabbi rahim. So what you do here has an impact over there. But if you succumb because of frailty and human uh, deficiencies and you make tawbah, Allah will forgive you and then smack the devil in the face that although you succeeded to mislead these people, they made tawbah. They repented and they came back to me. Now I have forgiven them. So that really, uh, that's the straw that can, uh, breaks the camel's back. Basically, that Allah forgives human beings when they repent. Yeah, so the devil's work is done, but Allah's work is much more done when he forgives. This was the straight path, هَذَا صِرَاطٌ مُسْتَقِيمٌ So we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us the formula for eternal success with some effort and uh, negotiations here in this world. Basically the bottom line is, is that we will have to struggle in this world to maintain the straight path and every day is a different struggle, every day is a new struggle and we have to keep on going. It's our willingness to be committed to Allah that uh, takes us through every day. Yeah. Now, after a time that becomes a pattern, becomes your second nature which is good but then the devil will come with different issues, different problems and so on. So you have to maintain that, uh, you know, that's why you need to be guided yeah, at every stage of your life so that you don't go astray, especially in your intellectual thinking, your academic thinking, and in your understanding of the deen and understanding of uh, human behavior and so on. وَلَقَدْ أَضَلَّ مِنْكُمْ جِبِلًّا كَثِيرًا أَفَلَمْ تَكُونُوا تَعْقِلُونَ Indeed, he has misguided from you so many generations. Um, the devil has misguided so many people. Jibillan kathira, so many generations. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, the devil has succeeded in misguiding human beings. Um, so why would the divine now concede this defeat? <laughs> When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, جِبِلًا كَثِيرًا that, that means that he hasn't done his job. Who? Allah. Allah hasn't done his job and the devil's done his job. That's what it means, right? <coughs> so no, it doesn't mean that. It means the reality is that human beings are frail and human beings are weak and human beings will always succumb to temptation and to pressure and to desire and all of that you know, evil stuff. So this is a warning from Allah to those people who take heed and those people who know how to read and understand and how those people who read wahi that this is uh, something uh, of a very, very serious nature. The devil has misguided from you so many people, so many, meaning that don't let him do that to you. So if uh, he has misguided uh, a few, then he has been unsuccessful in misguiding the rest and the others. So you must make sure you're from the group that he does not misguide. Okay, that's the intent and purpose 
of this ayah. Wallahu alam because we see Afalam takunu taqilu. If only you were to understand. What is there to understand? That the devil misguides everybody? No. What is there for you to understand is that you should not become amongst those that are misguided. And you should use your aql, your intelligence to make sure you are guided and you are on the right path and you don't fall victim and prey to the devil and the devil worshippers and those who perpetuate the system of the devil. أَفَلَمْ تَكُونُ تَعْقِلُ So you know there, the Qur'an emphasizes using the aql, using the intellect, using our ability to rationalize and to think and reflect and contemplate and all of that. So we must use all of our brain power in order to make sure we stay away from that group. هَذِهِ جَهَنَّمُ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوَعَدُونَ On the day of judgment, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will announce and the angels will announce this hadhi, this here in front of you is Jahannam. It is hell. Allati kuntum tu'adun. The one that you were promised. That you were promised this hell. Now the hell will rage with, with anger. It will be a ferocious roar that you can hear from 500 miles away. 500 years away, not miles, you can hear the sound of the Jahannam from hundreds and hundreds of years away. It will be such a threatening roar, as the Quran says in Surah Mulk. So Allah will then show people you know, yeah, that this is hell. That when you uh, are just 500 miles, years away, you are intimidated. Yeah. So. Anyway, we see that this is uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frightening people that if you follow the path of the devil, the devil is going to lead you to this path, the path that is hell. Um, because that's the only place he's going. He doesn't want to be in Jannah. Who? The devil. Hmm. The devil innately doesn't want to be in Jannah. He wants to be in hell. So he wants you to join him. So he wants his uh, groupies and his uh, hordes and his students to follow him in hell. And then when hell appears, then human beings will say, I don't belong to the devil, I belong to the human race. I belong to Bani Adam. So Allah says, no, this is where you belong. Uh, because you chose this path in the world. This is the one that you were promised. Allati kuntum tu'adun, the one you were promised and promised and threatened time and time again uh, but you did not listen and you felt that you had time to repent or you had time to change your course or you couldn't care less. You are nonchalant about the whole idea of living a good life and uh, a life that is with reason and with uh, precautions and with scruples and so on. Islawha al-yawma bima kuntum takfurun al Again, the word the day, this day, that this is a huge day, it's a long day, it's a ruthless day. Yeah. Today, now you will roast Islawha. Yeah. So you will now burn and roast because of your kufr, because of what you denied, because of what you rejected. So on one side, the Quran. And depicts the joy and the pleasure and the bliss of the people of Jannah. And on the other side, the Quran balances it out with these ayat and these verses to show human beings that there are two sides to the Lord. The Lord has a very, very good, noble, generous side. He is full of rahmah and compassion and so on. But he also has this side. Yeah, so now which side do you want him to come with? Yeah, so our understanding of the divine is complete, that we appreciate all the names of Allah, not just the gracious names and the beautiful names. We also appreciate the majestic names, names that show that he is capable of punishing. Yeah, if he's capable of punishing, we have to be careful that he doesn't punish us. So this is this side. 
that is intimidating, majestic, all that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, which will be represented in Jahannam, and through Jahannam, that this is a place you don't want to be. So be careful in how you treat yourselves and how you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Islawha al-yawma bima kuntum takfurun. So today there, God forbid, alamal al-haqeed, you will be made to roast and burn and you will have nothing whatsoever. In order to relieve yourself and deliver yourself, accept Allah's rahmah. Uh, and that is the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning us not to follow the devil, not to worship the devil, and not to be. I think further than our noses, yeah, that there is another chapter in our lives after we die that we have to negotiate. اليوم نختم على أفواههم وتكلمنا أيديهم وتشهد أرجلهم بما كانوا يكسبون. This now again going into another scene. Again, you have to be careful. You don't draw the chronology, as I said, of the day of judgment based on the order of recitation. This is a different scene now. We're going to a different scene. A different scene on the day of judgment, Al-Yawma, today. This day, the day of judgment, what's going to happen? That we will seal their mouths. Yeah. We will seal their mouths. Yeah. And their hands will speak and their feet will testify. Bima kanu yaksiboon for what they earned. Yeah. Meaning the people will be questioned by the angels on the Day of Judgment. They will be given their books of deeds. And when they read their books of deeds, they will say that this book is lying. And uh, they will swear that they did not commit any kufr or shirk and so on. And they will try to justify themselves by hiding under the disguise of uh, running away from their deeds. And when that happens, this will happen. Allah will seal their mouths, their mouths will not be able to speak. Mm. They will have the ability to protest, but they won't have the ability to speak any more after they've spoken the first time. Yeah, so this is the second time. Uh, in the second hisab, in the second auditing, Allah will now seal their mouths and they will not be able to speak whatsoever. Instead of their mouths speaking, Allah will make their own hands testify against them. Right. So the rest of the body will testify and speak, as mentioned in another surah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ashadu alayhim juluduhum that their skin will also testify. So not just every organ, but the skin will testify against people or for people on the day of judgment mm. and then this will be the the fate of those who do not believe in Allah and don't uh, believe in the day of judgment and so on so then Allah will make them speak so the people who own their hands and their limbs and organs and their skin they will ask their skin how are you speaking so then the skin will respond, قَالُوا أَنْتَخَنَ اللَّهُ الَّذِي أَنْتَخَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ That the one who gives uh, speech to everything has given us speech. And because of his empowering us to speak, we are speaking. Mm, so you can imagine that scene. Al-Aman al Also in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that their, their hands will speak and their feet will testify yeah. so the hands because of what we say in, in language uh, we uh, what we earn through our hands yeah. so hands are used metaphorically to show what we earn and so whatever we earn through our bodies and limbs and organs that will be spoken and our feet will testify that this person made me go here and made me do this and this and that. So this is a scene of now testimony and uh, bringing forward in front of the criminal himself 
that you cannot escape judgment today. And judgment will be levied against you by you. Yeah. Not just by God or the angels. So Allah will say, okay, I know everything what you do. The angels will show them, this is the book of deeds, and these are the measures and the weight of your good deeds and bad deeds, and they'll show. But these people say, no, we don't believe that. So Allah will say, okay, how about you? And so Allah will make these uh, limbs and organs testify against the perpetrator and say that you have condemned yourself, so judgment is final and complete and total for these people. This will be a group of people. It won't be for everybody. It will be a certain group of people who are absolute criminals, and they will be forced to then obviously concede that this is uh, not for them to, to, to argue about a judgment on this day. Well, just a little half year. Allah save us from those people. بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ وَلَوْ نَشَاءُ لَطَمَسْنَا عَلَىٰ أَعْيُونِهِمْ فَاسْتَبْقُوا السِّرَاطَ فَأَنَّا يُبْسِرُونَ Had we wanted, and had we wished, or, had, or if we will, uh, we will blot out their eyes. لَطَمَسْنَا عَلَىٰ أَعْيُونِهِمْ yeah. And then how they then race towards the path. فَاسْتَبْقُوا السِّرَاطَ That they will then race towards the path. Then there's no path because their eyes are not working. And they can't see anymore. How can they see when they have no eyes? I mean, on the day of judgment, they will have no nur, and they will not have the ability to see anything and to think straight. And then they will be able to walk, and they will be now falling over on their knees, mukibban, as the Quran says. Hmm. Falling on their knees time and time again to get from one place to another and they won't be able to do anything. So this is the picture Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is depicting for those who are criminals. Where the series started with this ayah. So today, <coughs> oh you are criminals, you are now going to be separated. And you will be separated by going through these hurdles and through these phases of inquisition and interrogation and auditing and all of that. So, so this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning people. And this obviously comes in a surah called Surah Yaseen, which is the heart of the Qur'an, where the Qur'an wants human beings to work for their salvation and prevent themselves from damnation. And this is the spirit of Yaseen, that when a warner comes, meaning the Prophet ﷺ comes as a Nabi and as a Rasul, he, he has now two missions. One is to give glad tidings to those who do good, and the other is to warn those who don't do good. And this summarizes the whole approach of Surah Yasin, that you have this you know, immense sense of balance, uh, that you have both sides, not just one side. You have the Bashir and you have the Nadir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is capable of rewarding as he is capable of punishing. And that is represented by the Sharia. The Sharia tells you, you may do this, but you may not do this. That's how you get the straight path. إِنَّكَ لَمِنَ الْمُرْسَلِينَ عَلَى سِرَاطِ mustaqim. And this is Sirat al mustaqim that the surah begins with in the beginning. So if people take heed, and they read Surah Yasin every morning, then they'll be on this straight path where they're not fooled by themselves and fooled by the devil and fooled by the temptations of the world. And if we want it, we could transfix them and we could erode them right in their place despite their status then they will not be able to proceed nor will they be able to retreat or go back and so on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we could just uh, uh, transfix them mm. we could distort them them and their being and their faces and everything else, even their natures, then they won't be able to do anything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that he has absolute power 
and prerogative to do whatever he wishes and he wills. The fact that he doesn't will, so he doesn't do. And that is from his fadl and from his grace, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> is more than capable of doing uh, what they fear themselves because this is what the devil does. The devil mutates and the devil distorts. The devil is guilty of maskh. Yeah. Had we wanted, we could have defaced them, distorted them, mutated them, uh, as the devil does. The devil distorts and the devil mutates. He interferes with creation and he interferes with everything that Allah has created. He interferes with the creation of Allah. Yeah, that uh, they swear uh, by Allah that uh, they will indeed uh, change and distort and mutate the creation of Allah through their science and through their manipulation and through their economics and through their politics and so on. So th this idea of maskh, okay, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking of is a response to the mutation and a distortion that the devil influences uh, in the world. And this mutation is everywhere, as we know. There's not an industry where there is no mutation. Everywhere there's maskh, and this is all the doings of the devil. This is following the devil. This is worshipping the devil, that you want to interfere genetically with everything Allah creates, and you want to use it to gain money and capital, <coughs> wealth and power, and influence, and etc. But what you, do, what you do is that you do it at the expense of mutating, changing, distorting the creation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, which is very, very satanic. <laughs> so, the, the, the Satan, the devil, will tell people you'll make more money if you do this. But you will see that it has adverse effects on human beings. So adversely, the devil is now mutating human beings uh, by exploiting greed. Yeah. Right. So you have these wonderful corporations uh, that is so greedy. They, they are so greedy that they will distort everything. Even the food you eat, yeah, there's nothing pure left in the world today, but there's plenty of money. As the stock market goes up, okay, you have the flu, <laughs> which is an epidemic. If that isn't a mutation, then what is? All these viruses and diseases that go around in the world, they're a result of the mutations that happen and occur in society, in civilization. These are all signs from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that people are worshipping the devil. So the devil will make it seemingly to you that you can make more and more money, uh, but at the same time is going to destroy you. The devil's objective is to destroy the human race at any cost, through any means, okay? so either through this industry or that industry and this establishment and that establishment, or this uh, kind of distorted science, uh, this kind of warped idea of uh, be being benefactors of the human race and so on. Okay. So what I'm saying is that this had we wanted we could have mutated them but we don't do that because uh, we are divine. Those who mutate are devilish and devils. The divine doesn't mutate. The devil doesn't distort and so on. So the, the, you get the sense that uh, there, there, there's a world in which there's struggle. That's what I'm saying. It's a constant struggle. It's a daily struggle. You're going to struggle with these things and ideas and ideals all the time. Where the sense of a pure life no longer exists anywhere in the world. The whole world is polluted. And there's a global warning effect on the whole world. And the climatic changes. And that's just at the geographic level never mind at the f level of food, where everyone's food is impacted, and then never mind economics, where everyone's financial well-being is also now mutated and disrupted and distorted, and so on. Then 
you know, the ethics and morals aside, human beings have a problem. And that problem is from masq, mutation. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through his fadl and rahmah and mercy, is saying that we didn't mutate the human race and the human civilization. We kept them on its fitrah. The devil comes in and starts to meddle, interfere, disrupt, distort, and then mutate. And this is the straight path then we should be in making dua Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to follow the straight path inshallah ameen ya rabbal alamin wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khayri khalqi muhammadi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa ya rahmatika ya rahmat